Good evening and welcome to the Southern Art Podcast, episode number five, with myself, Simon Jones, and my guest for this evening and co-host, fulfilling two, to count them, two of a quota, Iqbal Malik. Good evening. Good evening, sir. How are you? I'm all right. Didn't think this uh, night would uh, take off, but uh, well, we're on it. Yeah, we're, we're on it. I mean, we have to uh, come clean. Unfortunately, there's been a few sort of family issues back and forth where we've had to make a few cancellations for uh, potential guests. And one of our current guests who we were hopefully having on this evening, Tony Webb, isn't I was going to say, well. are you going to name, name well, the, the person? Well, we... Uh, What's his name? <laughs> um, no, 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 that's fair enough. But obviously, uh, Tony, we hope you get well soon. Uh, it's it's sad that we don't have you here tonight, but hopefully we can sort of channel you in spirit. So, Iqbal, you've had a really, really busy couple of weeks um, under the Frequency House banner. Things have been moving forward quite a lot. Um, if I'm to understand it, you held the annual Poetry Slam at Cinema & Co., uh, this week just just gone, just Friday just gone. Um, yeah. Tell us about that. Tell me what's going on with that. Well, Swansea Poetry Slam. So set that up in 2016. Right. And this was the fourth year. Um, I'm still, it's just kind of weirding me out. We haven't got four people here. No, 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 it's good. Um, which is, uh, it's, it's throwing me a little bit. Like no, I said, it's a bit, it's a bit, it's a bit, um, Alas, Smith, Smith and Jones, isn't it? it sort but it's, of it's head to head. It, but it's it's good though because we haven't done one like this. It's sort yeah. of mixing up the format. And yeah. the other thing with it, if we were sort of going to get into the mechanics of it, um, part of the reason why Frequency House is set up. So let's not lose sight of the four years you've done to establish the um, the poetry, poetry slam. slam. Let's not forget about that. So we'll, I put a pin in it or park it, as our good friend Mr. Balsamo mm. would say. I've started using that, park it. Are you using park, it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've had to stop. Like, oh, Picking I'm, things up from guests, mate. Yeah, it's I always know. a dangerous, dangerous business. Yeah. Um, so, but the poetry side of things is is heavily interwoven into who you are as an artist. So to not talk about it would be a disservice to not only yourself, uh, it would also be, uh, it would be a disservice to Frequency House as a whole because it was one of the sort of um, pillars, as it were, for why Frequency House was created. So uh, that's why I think it's important that we're having this conversation, you know, to really get Happy out. to have the conversation, I but, think but weirdly haven't been referred to as an artist before. Well, I, you, I don't know why. Well, what would, what would you call yourself then? I don't really, I haven't really thought about it. I mean, it's just, it, it is art, obviously. Um, but I mean, I, I struggle sometimes to call myself a poet. You know, I'm, I wouldn't say I'm a prolific writer. Um, but obviously I've got a lot of these uh, other interests on the go, should we say. The Poetry Slam, I mean, that was a big thing for me because um, I basically set that up because there was nothing like that in Swansea. Um, Had you seen it somewhere else before? Well, yeah. I mean, um, the the I entered a um, poetry slam in London. Uh, the London Poetry Slam, I think it was a guy called John Paul. And um, that was years ago now. And I went there and the guys were amazing, like outstanding. Um, and I just thought, well, I mean, because I crashed and burned, like within the first round, um, reading a lot off my phone, reading off, off a piece of paper. And not really getting the performance side. Well, how long have you been a poet at this point? Well, I've been writing possibly, well, 20, 25 years. But so I guess, I don't know, 15 years in. Um, but I just hadn't done poetry slams before. Um, so to bring something like that to Swansea, I thought was um, desperately needed. You know, I think that we, I mean, we've talked about the music scene, the art scene, the cultural scene in Swansea. And the things have just been lacking. You know, and it's about pushing things forward a little bit, bringing people outside their comfort zone. Um, and the Poetry Slam for me was a perfect vehicle to get people thinking in a slightly different way. The Poetry Slam for me, I think, is a very, what's the word? It's a very brave thing to do. And when I say brave, the emphasis isn't sort of like a condescension, like, oh, it's very brave, because that's sort of how it's kind of could be construed. What I mean is that to go out there and do something that different, that isn't, say, like an Am, an am Dram club or a gig or a covers band, it's or, you know, it's an art installation, you're dealing with very 
potent and visceral material. You can be, I would imagine, that yeah. some of it's very uh, disconcerting, perhaps an eye into the inner machinations of someone's soul, how they operate, how they think, and it, you know, like good art can challenge well, and become it's comfortable. Lot, it's a lot more in your face than normal poetry because a lot of poets just, you know, either sit and read or do a, a more formal reading from a book. And poetry, but you know, you say it's new. I mean, it's 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 been around. Well, I, I did mine, what sort of say, ten years ago, should we say? All right, ten, fifteen years ago. Um, and I mean, but these things have been going around forever. You know, it was actually established in Chicago in the eighties. I mean, that's how long we're talking. Obviously, then London catches up as the big city, the big metropolis, uh, draws in a certain other kind of energy. The art scene is looking for something a bit different, um, and that was just utterly lacking in Swansea. Um, but the interest, interesting thing is that there's a lot of performance poets who don't really see themselves as that. You know, they're having to sort of um, face the the interesting kind of um, prospect of of moving their uh, poetry, their writing, their performance up a gear. Um, but a lot of them have got that in the back pocket. They can do it, you know, but it's actually about getting it out there, man. So this was the fourth year. Mm hmm. Um, we could safely say if you'd done a year to two years, excuse me, I'm going to have a little bit of the windy box. Hang on, Here I'll edit go. it out one second. Thomas Watkin. Thomas Watkins. Yeah, apologies. Kuru Half. Which means? Um, I don't know, you tell me. I don't know. I haven't got a clue. Uh, I don't know. It's uh, probably on the back of the bottle. Right. Does it say on the back of the bottle? I, I'm, I'm not sure. I've not. The um, taste of Welsh summer captured in a bottle. Kuru Half is a refreshing golden summer. Ale brewed using the finest flour, malted barley and wheat. Uh, infused with invigorating <laughs> citrus flavours of golding and cascade, whole hops and finished off with summer floral aroma of a famous fudge hop. No, sorry, I so read that red fudge hop. <laughs> oh Fuggle hop. Enjoy oh Welsh summertime anywhere, any place, uh, rain or shine. Uh, a taste of summer from the land of song which is good. And they're on the Enterprise Park, uh, SA68RP. Uh, no. I mean, we basically want Thomas Watkins to sponsor the Salah I think we just want somebody we? to sponsor the yeah. podcast. <laughs> Let's not beat around the bush. Or the barley. Well, uh, or the barley. <laughs> but I mean, you know, a brewer, a local brewer is going to be the best, uh, I think, if we can manage to isn't, uh, isn't, do that. It's, it's, I know that it's um, slightly off topic, but, oh my God, ale and alcohol, for all its... Um, when not imbibed properly and abused, yes, it's terrible and it's awful that people become hooked on it and it's a very uh, dangerous substance, which is, you know, freedom. But there is something about this level of interplay with two people talking and just enjoying it. It's wonderful. It is. It's a really wonderful thing. And you know what? Dylan Thomas would have liked that. I think he would have. Because, I mean... I like Chris was saying in, uh, nice segue. in a couple of, yeah, yeah. That's brilliant. <laughs> yeah. No, it's cool. You should yeah. do it. No, but it's true. I mean, as, as, uh, our other co-host, Chris Organ was saying, who would be um, here, who would be just, a, just, a, yeah, side, literally yeah. just, just to your right. Yeah. Um, you know, the whole point of the podcast, um, is about, uh, tapping into the, um, Cardoma boys, the Cardoma mm. gang, wasn't it? Who used yeah. to sit next door with Dylan Thomas and chew the cud and talk about arts and music women, wine, whatever it would have been. And that there would have been drinking and smoking and all the rest of it. But I mean, um, that level of exchange is just missing from 21st century to, you know. What do you mean? Why? Because you've got the internet. There's nothing. But there's still pubs, mate. There's st yes, but not the, you just said, you hit the nail on the head. You said about music, mm. art, culture. Okay, so people would go off and have their little adventures, say, to London, Bristol, Bath, overseas, and then they'd come back and then they would impart whatever knowledge or cultural, uh, I don't know, cultural touchstone they came across or some zeitgeist movement, something along those lines. And then they would, they'd, you know, they'd go, oh, Dylan, I found out about this. It's Have you heard about this? It's the latest thing from Saint-Tropez or it's the latest thing Depends from Depends who you hang out with, though, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, I have those thing. conversations all the time. And I'm sure you I do don't. with you. Yeah, but you with will. With you, with you well, and, yeah, when and come, Chris in the yeah, car usually. But, but when it comes to um, literature, being a, a, a tad pretentious about it. I mean, that's not the, pretentious. But I mean, you know, you will have those conversations with music and what, what what's out there. And uh, I mean, I've been out of my depth a couple of times. I keep saying it, you know, in terms of like the sort of heavier podcast uh, discussions. 
I, you know, I've been a little bit lost, but I've also learned quite a lot, which is quite interesting. Ah, and that's the point. Well, it, indeed. Learning can be uncomfortable at first, yeah. but then you yeah. sort of, you go, aha, and you have touchstones. So I want to get back to uh, the poetry evening, okay? Because it was this Friday. Um, and it's safe to say that after four years, it's pretty much established. Because after a year, yeah. don't, when I say this, it's, you know, it's like mm -hmm. comedic relief. You know, if it was done, done and dusted in a year, then fair enough, try something else. Mm. I mean, you must be very chuffed with the fact that four years is pretty good. That's longer than some relationships. <laughs> it is. Let's be honest. It's probably longer than most of my relationships. To be well, honest. at least you're honest. Um, but um, no, I've ha I have. It's slightly long. However, uh, <laughs> just to throw that in there. Yeah, um, Thomas Watkins. Yeah. No, I mean, you know, I am uh, pretty pleased with it. I mean, as you say, it's, it's become something of an established feature on the local scene. Um, and it also brings in people from um, other towns and cities as well. I really? Mean, Good, go yeah, on. I mean, well, okay, so let's have a look. So the people who've won it so far all have been women, actually, interestingly. That's very so interesting. It is, yeah. Um, first year, there was a girl from, oh, God, it was either West Wales or Cardiff. I got a funny feeling it might have been Cardiff. Um, second year, and, and her name was uh, Stephanie Finnegan. Mm -hmm. Second year was um, Rufus Mufasa. Who um, we're hopefully having on the podcast. Who we are hopefully having on. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, she's really busy, super talented. Um, got a big sort of um, uh, interest in sort of rap music, poetry. It kind of... Well, the two do intersect. The two do intersect, yeah. I mean, I was watching a um, YouTube video on her this morning, weirdly mm. enough, because uh, someone mentioned it on Friday. Um, you know, you know, there's uh, some rap battles that you see online quite... Um, to steal your word from earlier, quite visceral, direct stuff, mm. very personal. Mm. Um, and, you know, so there's artists out there who are doing some very, very good stuff, you know? So, but anyway, the point was um, Rufus Mufasa won in the second year. Uh, the third year, another girl from Cardiff was Amelia Unity. She was a judge at this year's Slam. Um, and then this year was Rosie Bufton. Um, works in Swansea. Um, but... You know, there's just, there is a wealth of talent. There is a wealth of talent. Um, and it's, I, I, what I want to do is sort of tap into it. My only frustration, I think, probably for me with the slam is that I can't enter it. And that's not to say, you know, um, I want to win it, but I, I would want to win a slam like that, you know? And, and and what happens is nationally, once you've won a slam anywhere in Britain, you can enter the UK National Slam Championships. Um um, and then, you know, there's, there's bigger ones again, international ones, but, um, you know, it's getting a bit of traction. Um, and next year will be the fifth year. Hopefully you should do something very big for the fifth. Well, year. I, yeah, I do. I do want to, um, I want to increase the prize money because the prize money so far has been a hundred pound for the winner. Well, why do you do it here? Well, I'm not sure it'll be big enough mm. to be honest. Well, as um, in to I mean, how many, what's the turnout? Well, it, it, it fluctuates. I mean, I, I'd say solidly 50 people easily um first year was massive because mm -hmm. um, it was a new thing I it was a new thing um i really pushed it the last year um to be fair i, I didn't really um advertise it as well as i should have um but still got big numbers well that that's a good thing though because um in a digital age to sort of just keep hounding people about i've got this event i've got this event. you're going to turn people off mm. and if you've been established now for four years, we're going to the fifth year next year, mm. and you've decided to bring it under the Frequency <clears throat> House banner, if you don't have to advertise it that much, it's become, is mainstay a good word, would you say, or a quite, staple quite, yeah, of the yeah, scene? Yeah, yeah. both. both. Yeah. Um, you should be on top of the world with something like that. Well, I'm happy what, with it. What but an I, achievement. But, but you know what? So, I mean, what I've done is try to tap into um, different parts of the arts communities with the slam. Mm. So, um, for instance, the winner obviously gets the slam trophy and they get a hundred pounds. What is the money. slam trophy? The tram, okay. So the slam trophy, right, I, I got a little bit of criticism for our, uh, fellow co-host, Chris Organ, who said it was a bit gaudy. What was it? Was it? A bit, well, it's just basically a, a gold plated looking sort of, uh, microphone. microphone. That's nice. I think it was quite stylish. I don't know. I mean, I thought it was quite fun. Um, but anyway, so you get the trophy, but also I've been linking in for the winners and, um, actually for the runner up in the last couple of years, not, I'm not sure about this year, but, um, so the winner will also get a feature slot at the, um, Swansea Fringe Festival that, Brilliant. Our, that our mutual friend, Joe Mr. Bayless. Joe Bayless, good yeah. evening, wherever you are. Yeah. 
So he, yeah, so so he's running that and he's doing a, a sterling job on it. Um, and last year's winner, uh, Amelia Unity, actually opened the Swansea Fringe Festival with, a, you know, a heavy weight of the poetry world in, in the UK, um, Holly McNish. Mm. Um, but Amelia actually opened the, uh, you know, the Fringe Festival. So I think what I've tried to do is link into some of the cultural things that have gone on mm. before Joe's uh, Fringe. Um, uh, Pierre Donahue was doing the Donoka Gentle Festival. We have to again acknowledge the fact, unfortunately, we didn't have Pierre on, which was a real shame. I want Pierre to come on the show. I did apologize to him when I saw him in the store. Um, sorry, you were saying, didn't yeah, but I mean, he didn't cancel in fairness. No, we, it, was it, it was circumstances it was uh, beyond, beyond our control. control. Um, but yeah, but you know, Pierre did the Donoka Gentle Festival for six years, all right, and um. Uh, you know, he was bringing in big names. I can't remember which year it was, maybe the first or the second year. He had someone like Joe Brandon. Um, he said, big poets come down. Now, I can... Uh, I think, yes, there is a link, I think, from where Pierre is originally from. I think Joe Brand had some involvement prior because where Pierre is from... Is it Owensfield or Holtzfield? I can never remember. She, she was involved at some point in demonstrating to keep that... Um, oh yeah, actually, from, that being, rings a bell. from being developed. Yeah, excuse me, quite rightly so. But um, well, su successfully. Yeah, by, successfully by, by, by the sounds of it. Um, um, but but I mean, so like Joe was one of the sorry, not Joe Bayliss, but Joe, Joe Brands Brand. was was one of the people that uh, um, uh, Pierre got in, um, and also I'm pretty sure it was in the do not the the, the do not go gentle festival where he had um, Luke Wright in as well, um, a national poet uh, who was campaigning sort of to become the next poet laureate. But he's a massive performance poet, huge performance poet. I once had the pleasure of knowing a gentleman. I have to rephrase that because it sounds very... I think we yeah, have to go heavy yeah, on the yeah, edit yeah, on that yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's all right, it doesn't matter. Not at this stage of the game. Um, his first name was Ben, I can't remember his last name. And he was the poet in residence or poet laureate for Bath. This is over 10 years ago. And he was genuinely very similar to yourself. One of the nicest people I'd ever met. Uh, the, there was no, there was an edge to him, but not an edge that you wouldn't want to rest on, if that makes any sort of sense. He was a well-rounded person. That's some two contrary po uh, points there. Um, but he generally was a real human being. But at the same time, had that artistic fire still but you running know through. What? I mean, I find that with poets particularly, and I, I know you're talking about artists generally, but poets particularly, I think, have... You know, they, they have to furrow some dark corners when it comes to their words, I was man. I was actually going to come into bat in a big way um, for poets uh, more than just by saying that, by saying artists, because I did a bit of stand-up, as, as you as you know, right. unsuccessfully, terrible, you know, right. not not great. Um, I'm mm. good on, I'm good at one-to-one -one with a group of mates because it's a rant, but then obviously. Um, but... It occurred to me in the conversation, like stand up and poetry are almost, they are like very close cousins. Um, I can relate to the fear aspect because you are so completely unashamed exposing your thoughts. Now, in comedy, you have a script and you go off and you wait for the, the laugh and X, Y, and Z. And you come off stage and there's that rush of emotions if people don't like what you're saying. Because it's like, well, is it a reflection on me? Is there something wrong with this, that, and the other? I bought, I bared my soul. I thought that was some of my best material. And with poetry, it I've said this to you, you know, off, off air, which <laughs> if you're listening to this off air would just be Iqbal and I talking. <laughs> That's what it would be, being friends. Right. Um, but we discussed it before. Like the, the I don't want to use the word brave. The sheer... Uh, the what are you I, trying to say i'm, what, I'm what, trying to i don't i want to say brave but i don't want to say brave what in terms of poetry integrity poet. integrity integrity in character is almost you don't care and that's so liberating you know what i mean it's so liberating that you don't care you get out there and you're doing something you're well, bearing all well, to the world you know what i mean if I, you know this the the slam that i entered in or the first slam i entered into in london it was as i said it was a car crash was it intimidating it was intimidating yeah absolutely um because you follow some people who are exceptional um then you get on 
Um, it's a complete wipeout. And you know what? It does matter. You know, you do have a bit of a bruised ego when it goes terribly wrong. Um, but going back to your point there about the difference between, um, well, not the difference, you were saying it's a bit of a similarity between comedians, poetry, sort of, sort of, you know, kind of standing up. And well, you're on your own. You can't hide. You are. You, yeah, you are on your own. But I think, po sorry, I think comedy is, is harder because you have to get the laugh to actually um, make your act worthwhile. I never really look for a laugh when I'm doing poetry. I mean, there are some things that, um, you know, uh, are based upon humor of a situation, for example, but you know my stuff, right? And I do, I can write some quite dark um, sort of poetry. Um, You're cinematic from the work that I have done quite gratefully actually uh, working with you doing the sort of a uh, soundscape musical accompaniment it, it, it's very cinematic um and it's very enjoyable to work with it's it never well the content is the, the, the content of my poetry i think is a bit different to a lot of people who write stuff um you know i um I just can't get into writing stuff about the mundane i'll be honest with you it just i want to tear my hair out when i hear it you know, people talking about, you know, the football match. You know, they've been down what, in there. A, in a poem? Yeah. Have and you I, actually come across that? Of course I have, man. Um, I, I, and, this um, is all new to me. And, 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 I mean, look, there is there is a place for the everyday in poetry, right? Because it is about celebrating the the aspect of life, the aspect of being, you know? So you've got to talk about the everyday stuff. However, my view is poets have a certain responsibility as wordsmiths, as someone who has or tries to attain um, sort of greater understanding about the situation in life generally, there, there's a responsibility to to, to, to to plow into those kind of scenes in the soul. Couldn't it almost be argued that it could be used as a form of very good psychotherapy? Very that's, good. That's probably the most of my, of, of, of my writing, to be honest. So wouldn't it help... Um, because I, I, I was having this conversation today. It, I don't want to sort of sound alarmist, but it does feel like there's a divide. Oh, divide's the wrong word. There does feel like an uneasiness in the air, and I don't know whether or not. Are you, are you talking sort of broadly socially political? Yes. that kind of. Yes, uh, without right. get without getting into it, and without sort of nailing any sort of political colours to the mast or. Yeah, yeah whatnot yeah. because yeah. that's a whole other podcast that we will well i think we all get the subtext of that yeah. yeah um because this is i mean this is under the whole frequency house thing is about unity and it's about bringing a standard and we were discussing this in the garden before we start the podcast a, a, a way of being perhaps a way of being towards your fellow person or persons mm. because um, as mentioned on previous podcasts, there seems to be a bit of a backbiting, bit of a, a pull you down nature to the way some people will conduct themselves. As Steve asking, Balsamo was expressing as Steve Balsamo in was saying. podcast number four. So, I mean, under his sort of spark of influence with Frequency House, and you agree, it's almost we want the label and whatever artistic endeavor we do, we want obviously quality to be there. But a safe, no, I'm not going to say safe space, but because that just sounds ludicrous. <laughs> you don't want your art to be safe. You want it to challenge. It has to. Otherwise, it's boring. Mm. Um, it needs to be a place where it can be nurtured, you know, and where there's a, in, in my opinion, where you can behave, where you should behave graciously to your fellow artists and artists. And you're obviously thinking there's that that it, that's lacking a little bit in certain quarters. I think it's. I'm guessing. I think you should be the change you wish to see in the world. And I know that sounds incredibly. Uh, it's a platitude, and it is. It's absolute. Of course, it's a platitude, and it's very generic and it's cliche. But unfortunately, well, standards of behaviour don't cost any money at all. No, they don't. However, standards of like uh, recording, unfortunately, do. Well, yes, obviously. <laughs> Four Shure SM7B mics didn't come cheap. Um, you know what I mean? It's always about so, the money with you. So well, it, you know, but, but you know, we want, as you were saying, I mean, the point was we wanted to create something which has got a certain uh, underlying quality in terms of where we're looking to go. As, I could as throw the blues as. argument with you at oh, that point. No, no, no. I, I, I didn't want it to come across as being... Um, well, do it. Well, Let's hear it. 
See, this, but funny enough, you should mention that, right? So we chose this house to do the recording in because it's steeped in a history which um, unfortunately has just been left to stay in one place <coughs> regarding a few of Dylan's selected works and one play for voices under Milkwood, which unfortunately is all that is recycled mm. and talked about. Um now, Jeff went off and did something very unique, very different, and brought um, history to life. Okay, mm -hmm. for the want of a better expression, he brought history to life. He allowed the general public to come to somewhere like this and imbibe the atmosphere mm -hmm. as close as he possibly could. And we're talking about 10 years worth of dedication and restoration to something that was an absolute touchstone of not only of Swansea culture, but of Welsh culture, and then obviously to American culture because of mm. it, Dylan's influence in New York. Um, slightly, I've gone slightly off topic, but that was the whole thing, was the environment in which we were in, the vibe, the the mojo, as we would put it, right? Okay, you know, I'm kind of, I, I like my woo-woo. I like my, like, things you can't see. The woo-woo. What's the, the woo-woo? I'm taking that from Joe uh, Joe Rogan's podcast, good old Joe, yeah. um, where when they talk about anything quantum physics or quantum mechanics, there's mm. like, it's woo-woo and woo-woo. It's all a little bit, right. you know, it's theory-based and you you can't kind of pin it down. And But it's still, you know, I think there is a need for a little bit of mysticism in some context, whatever. Um, call me weird. I don't care. Um, my point is this. When you listen back to some of those old blues recordings, okay, they were recorded usually on one or two track mono recording desks, sometimes in a hotel room. I mean, a good example of that is Alan Lomax was um, a gentleman who went around America recording people as from the Appalachians uh, and uh, all different parts of uh, America, as it were, um, traditional folk and blues sorts of songs. Because he had the foresight to realise that this was a huge part of American culture that if it was not catalogued and recorded, would disappear forever. It would die, unfortunately, with the people who sung them. It's And this does tie into poetry and it ties into rap a little bit and just park that mm. idea. Hi, Steve. Um, but uh, no, no, we should. Uh, um, but um, so you listen back to some of those really early blues recordings, like Lead Belly, for example. They're recorded. It's terrible. You know, it's scratching, grainy. But it's got mojo. It's got soul. It's got something. It's what I think of as a canvas. So if you go into a recording studio and it's all treated perfectly and it's perfectly soundproofed and you have this perfectly constructed album and you do all the editing in post, that's wonderful. It sounds great on your headphones and you can really produce it. There is something missing. There's a sense of the real, the authentic, the human quality. So this is why I think we ch choosing this place was fantastic because even talking there is a little bit of echo. We're recording it in somewhere so significant. Well, those, those earlier recordings and that, you know, perhaps recordings you might get off an LP, for example, you know, the, the, the sound of the, of the moments do come through rather than the sort of highly polished stuff, which is what we, we tend not to be interested in anyway. Um, but, you know, people, um, you know, when it comes to producing music, I mean, you know, using an eight track recorder, for example, uh, would be a ideal start. And I'm sure you've got something in your shop uh, along those have, lines. Yes. Um, it's a lovely piece of kit. It is, yeah, yeah. yeah. Boss is it's it's, it's it's an excellent uh, piece of kit, modestly priced as well. Lovely, yeah. It's got, uh, a, CD it high, it's got a CD burner, in CD it as well. burner, high quality. Yeah, I mean, I would good. thoroughly recommend anyone buy that. Um, but no, going back to your point, actually, generally about the house, about Jeff, like, like we've said on most of the podcasts, probably so far, um, Jeff has a certain vis vision for the birthplace. Um, he wants people in here, wants people to use it. I mean. It's pretty unusual that you can have a podcast such as this. We've turned up tonight, and we're the only two people in a blue plaque building. Do it, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, when you it, think about it, it. it's pretty mental, you know. But this is why I think it's it's continually worth doffing our uh, cap to to you know Jeff Hayden because he's encouraging the kind of use of space. Well, I mean, it has to be kept 
alive. It can't be allowed to stagnate. And a house is somewhere for living. It's a, mm. it's a somewhere for people to have experiences. Mm. And what I love about this place is I love the guest book. I love the fact you can flick through the guest book and there are people as far as Australia, Utah, and all parts of the world coming. To, I mean, that's only two parts of the world, but you know what I mean? I'm yeah. saying it's, I mean, but it's got reach though, isn't it? I mean, we were having a look the other day at uh, the recording by Jimmy Carter, mm. for, you know, former US president. Now that's, um, yeah. And he'd made a recording specifically having I, I i don't know the full story but having had a some sort of um uh you know kind of liaison and correspondence with jeff um and and um jimmy carter's love for dylan thomas and the birthplace you know having that video recording that you can actually watch in the house i mean it's pretty amazing really i mean dylan's pretty dylan's pretty important for me because my father is a big dylan thomas fan um all right, maybe that's probably the wrong way to phrase it. He he appreciates and likes Dylan Thomas. And as we said on the first podcast with mm. Jeff, my old uh, elocution teacher <clears throat> went to school yeah. with Dylan. Yeah. And the house is almost is the same period, the house which I used to have my elocution lessons in, as this. It's almost identical. It's in Bellevue Road, and we'll leave that there. It's in mm. it's in Mumbles, and it's exactly the same construction. It even smells the same. Mm. So for me, it's very wholesome, and I like wholesome. In a world in which we live, obviously, saying about division and X, Y, and Z, you need... Well, so si, you know what? I mean, we were... It, it, this has been a common thread throughout all of the podcasts so far, right? What's happened to Swansea, you know, the history of it, and in particular... What's happened to the world? What's happened to the world, I know, right? But, I mean, you know, you, 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 we, we were actually talking about psychogeography with um, Steve Balsamo. This is one of his pet loves um, that he likes to get into, right? And, um, you know, the sense of place, the sense of the buildings, um, the importance of history, natural history within the environment, not just, um, you know, the sort of sweeps of Gower and the mumbles, but we're talking about the living, breathing spaces of the city centres, the, um, you know, the, you know, kind of villages you know, sort of further and further out. But the, the, the whole shape of Swansea changed. And we've still got gems like the birthplace here that haven't been embraced in a way that, frankly, they should have. It's because of disposable culture. It's I, I'm, I don't think it's, it's as simple as that, mate. I think it is. I, I've got to be honest. I genuinely think that something like this wouldn't have happened unless it had individuals like Jeff Hayden um, and friends of his. Um, um, he, I think he was mentioning um, Irene Mann, um, a local councillor who was um, doing the... Virgin uh, telephone boxes, um, uh, you know, sort of in and around the Uplands area. With they're, images they're amazing, of by the way. Yeah. I need to tell you about that. And just um, Conrad and I, mm. just so for listeners on the podcast, um, Conrad is my business partner. We run a shop together. Anyway, we won't get into that now. It's a, uh, it's a, it's a guitar shop. Um, so we were driving up through Uplands and he sort of turned around and he, he, so you come up the main road to up just before, just outside the, um, what's it called? The uh, Jehovah's Witness uh, church. Yeah, yeah. There's the Dylan Thomas one. Mm. And he was like blown away at the quality So he hadn't seen that? He'd never seen it before. And he was like, my God, that's amazing. Who did that? And I was like, well, Iqbal knows the person who did it. And it's, I said, that looks great. That looks fantastic. And then it, I don't know if this was a piece of information I've stored but the colour I was really interested in because that's the colour that copper goes when it oxidises. Yeah. Is that yeah. right? Are well, I... that's exactly what Jeff was talking about. Oh, right. right. Podcast right. number one. You yeah. switched off, didn't you? Um, no, I but, don't know. Uh, There's been a lot going on. Um, <laughs> I'm not going yeah, lie. no, that's true. But, um, no, th th you know, there was, you know, sort of deeper thinking behind, you know, what colour to do. Um, but it harks back to the, you know, Copperopolis um, history of, of Swansea, as we've discussed. Um, um, but, you know, what I was really kind of getting to uh, my previous point, I suppose, was that it takes people like Jeff, people like Irene Mann, people like the Fresh Mules Company um, to embrace and celebrate certain things with, within the city and actually, um, you know, invest in them sufficiently so they are legacies for future people, future generations. My big bugbear is why is it that the local council just don't have the vision for it, don't have the energy for it? 
Um, I, I've got to be honest, I think that's quite shameful, you know, because when Jeff took over this place, I can't remember when he bought it now exactly. He did actually tell us. It's uh, bad that we can't remember because we did do the podcast. We should have been paying attention. Yeah, it'll, it'll, it'll come back to me in yeah. a minute. It'll, 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 it'll certainly come back to me. But anyway, so he was saying that local council, local council had this place for four years and um, essentially turned it into a student bed set. I mean, the place, as Jeff was saying, was pretty shocking. It took someone like him to come in, step in and, and have a different kind of vision for the city. Um, and like I said, I think it's, it's, it's not right that we, we let buildings like this go to waste. Um, like we were saying before, right, with Steve Balsamo's pol podcast... Um, Poltercast. Poltercast. Um, well, it that's actually, staying in. That's not going. Oh, out. you, you. No, uh, no, sod, come on. Sod. No, I think we should. It's the beer kicking in here, man. No, You've no, got to give no, me a little bit of a break. Yeah, but it's it's good. This is this is the All kind right. of podcast we kind of need to do. But okay, so the point is, I'm enjoying it so far. How are you? Well, I think it's all right so far. I think it's really good. Other than the, other than the light shining through the window. But do you and, want sunglasses? And, no, I can't do that. Well, you can. Well, we're we're half trying to record it, so to have. It doesn't matter. Um, well, on video, that might look a little oh, bit look weird. funny. Um, well, yeah. Um, but, but the point I was making, right, not just the, the Dylan Thomas birthplace, right? Um, after the, um, the three day blitz, uh, in 1941, where, um, Swansea's, um, central town was essentially completely destroyed. You know, we were talking about that building, the Ben Evans building, yeah. the Harrods of Wales building, right? That was flattened. I mean, that was a, key building for Swansea. Um, so many swathes of um, Castle Street and High Street were just evaporated, basically. Um, but there were other parts of the city as well. And I was walking through town along the Kingsway, right? I was reading a bit about this the other day. Walking along the Kingsway and just where the NCP car park is on the Kingsway. Um, I can't remember the, the actual name of that little bit of it but essentially there were you know back in the 1940s there were townhouses there mm. uh, amazing townhouses i think it was called northampton place um that rings so, a bell yeah, yeah. So, so so that spot just got completely obliterated as well um but um behind the townhouses on the kingsway as it is now where the odeon sorry not the odeon where the oceana club was has mm. now been brought down and it's there's a new building going up uh but where the nightclub was oceana nightclub um that used to be um quite um um well it was it was it was a cinema wasn't it i can't remember the name of it but, it was the uh, Odeon cinema it was a, but it was a is a different name i think before that i think you're right yes it wasn't the plaza or something was it no the palace you i think you're thinking of and the palace was towards high street oh right it's okay. still there the building's still but, there but the point is right that building as a cinema was an old building that brought character, to, you know, to the town. Also, um, I was watching a YouTube video on um, some of the other developments around Swansea, right? Mm. And where Sainsbury's is now, yeah. Um, I think it was what the guy said. I think he might have said in like 1980 or 1981, uh, a planning application was put into the council to get rid of whatever it was, like the old flour mill or something like that. And you know, another historical building. I mean, some of these buildings in bigger cities like London. They're turned into, uh, you know, kind of inner city living and apartments, all the rest of it. But they had the character. So not only do we have on the one hand the three day blitz, as we've been talking about, but we've also had 30 year blitz. 40 well, yeah, blitz. we, you know, we've had politicians making poor decisions, dreadful decisions about our historical um, legacy that we should be able to celebrate today. And they've gone. You know, I, I just feel it's just immensely frustrating and it, it, it it's a good example with a birthplace how the council can't embrace that um and didn't did they it but took it took jeff to do it you're dealing with a personality type um but the british do one thing better than anybody else in the world and that's bureaucracy let's just let's just call it and all right british is probably the wrong word okay but it's obviously part of british cultures or english cultures sl slid into welsh culture it's bureau bure bureaucracy right mm. it is it's just simply just c cut it either way but i mean it's also about you know we put too much em em emphasis em on, um, no, <laughs> i love the you're, you're getting me here man no you're it's, me no, it's so, fun. so 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 you know there's been too much emphasis on money and the economy generally right because that tends to be where it's at when it comes to decision making a local level or national level right so with the sainsbury's development um the promise was 
that Sainsbury, Sainsbury's would bring in, I don't know, 150 jobs or whatever. To I would the have area. thought more than that. Well, it, however many it was, I don't think it was a, su- a substantial amount more, to be honest. Um, I actually like the supermarket. Well, that's an Yeah, okay. But I mean, it, you know, you don't have to demolish another no, building no, in order no. to put that one up. No, you you're know? quite right. You could utilize what you've already got there. Yeah. So, you know, on the promise of 100, have 150 jobs, we lose key cornerstone buildings in the city. You know, I, I, I just think it's, it's not right. We need to. Are you pointing? What, no, what, you've what, just what, hit what? on something. Something just went off in my head. Keep going. Um, I think it was at the end of that thread, to be honest. No, no, I, no, I, I no, no, it no, no. There, it's so. identity. identity. That's why we've got a problem with identity, yeah. because yeah. we keep demolishing yeah. the buildings, which, you yeah. know, has any form of identity, yeah. which then ties into you mm. doing the poetry slam, because it's a staple part of the yeah. culture of Swansea. So it's you trying to nurture an identity, much like what we're trying to do with Frequency House, because it is based in Swansea. Obviously, you want to think further yeah. afield. And this ties into what but, Jeff's but, doing you know, here. So, I mean, if you think about this, right, if you take the logical progression as to where Swansea would have been if that bombing, that three-day bombing hadn't occurred, right, we would have probably had It'd been one like of the most... Yeah, it would have been the most picturesque town yeah anywhere in britain it would I be mean, it, it's crazy to think that it would be close to clandid no junction i don't know if you've ever been up there but clandid no uh, well not clandid no junction that's the train stop okay. it's clandid no you really you need to get out and about me what do you mean not go on i love north wales north north wales has got some amazing places that people yeah. don't yeah. go and see uh from the south which is a shame mm. they tend to go on the m4 corridor and out into england but mm. honestly if you do want to do yourself a favor you want to get up to north wales get up to Aberystwyth. honestly the places are fantastic get more connected anyway what the clan did know mm. didn't get bombed I, I don't know maybe it did i am probably probably got that wrong i should start again to my knowledge i don't think it was affected that heavily but it, it is what i imagine swansea yeah would look but like. but just remember what steve balsamo said in almost in the opening remarks that he made about swansea um which was do you remember? No, I Swansea was, I was, was the, <laughs> Sw- S- Swansea was the second most bombed city in, in Britain. U- yeah, in, after Coventry. In, in UK, after Coventry, yeah. yeah. I mean, it was flattened. And this is the thing, you know, and it, it, you know, the cogs do tick over in your head and you think, well, if that hadn't happened, you know, and, you know, we talk about identity, where the pieces of the puzzle kind of fit together, um, it would be a very, very different town. I mean, it might, you know, whether that's a good thing or not, I, I mean, I, I can't say. Um, but in terms of the of the legacy, the historical legacy of the buildings, I mean, we lost so much, it's frightening. The, the other th- and, 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 and I'll Go say on. this as well, right? That if anyone should be anti-war, it should be people in Swansea because mm. of the effect, the physical effect it would have had um, and the psychological effect. Um, of of recovering from a devastating. Well, this goes uh, back to a statement campaign. I said. I think it's a city that's su- still suffering from post traumatic yeah. stress disorder. I think it's in the water. I think it's in the culture. It just wants to have. Oh, I don't. I don't want to bother with it. Just an easy ride. Just an easy ride. Don't want to know. Don't want to know. Don't want too much upheaval. Um, it's. I will put my cars on the table. I don't think I'll ever leave this town. I left this town. I went to live in Bristol unsuccessfully for I, eight years. I've been trying to leave. I can't do it. No, I can't. I'm I get, not sure I, why. It just no, like, stopped it, me getting out. And it's not... Um, oh, I'm going to quote... No, the quote of The Graveyard of Ambition, I only know about it through the film, Twin Town, right? Okay, so that's that's where it comes from. So I didn't want to say that quote and then sort of come across like I'm well-read on Dylan Thomas. I've got it from a pop culture reference, right? From, you know, men who've written, um, uh, you know, a film, basically. But it is... it. It's... N- I would... That would be one of the things I would challenge Dylan on now if he was sit, sort of sitting on the sofa over there or it was in the other room. I would say to him, it's not the great bit of ambition. It is not. I don't think it is. It just needs the right push. When Dylan Thomas was around in the 40s, right, the town was completely different. It's completely different. Um, you know, the population has grown substantially. Um, the um, mix of the city has changed phenomenally. Yeah. And it's not the same place that it was. I think in some ways it's better, but on the other hand, some ways it's it's not as good because, as, as I say, we've lost so many historical, um, you know, sort of features of the city. Um, but I don't know where I was going to go with that, but, um, you know... So with Frequency House, um, we are forever forging forward, forever moving forward. Um, 
Is there anything on the horizon at the moment that you're really excited about what we're doing? Because there's a few projects that are, you know, still being on the, well, on the hot plate. Wow. I mean, we've got a lot on the go, mate. Mm. Um, I'm really looking forward to uh, Chris Hogan's uh, album with Minds. Mm. Uh, we obviously had Ryan Who would be Aikens. Here? Yeah, yeah, we had we, we had Ryan Aikens in as well, the mm. uh, artist, drummer, and synth player um, from Minds as well. Um, I was fortunate enough to go down and listen to some of their recordings. They were mm. doing it in Um yeah. I don't You got photos of that as well. I've got it? some photos. Yeah, I mean mm. that 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 stuff was excellent. Uh, I'm maybe slightly biased. Uh, because on one of the tracks they asked me to put some spoken word poetry. Were you down. flattered by that? I was very flattered. Yeah, that 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 was kind of ego wise. It was like, yeah, okay. You I felt like you made it. it. Felt like you're in a band. Well, it's like I don't know if it's about feeling I was in a band. It was it was almost feeling a little bit wanted with what I write. You know, is that going to be a good thing? Yeah, of course it is. You know, but um, it was it was feeling that somebody else has seen that. Um, what I'm doing, how I'm reading, what I'm writing about has value, has worth. Um, so it's creating something that, you know, the sort of pebble in the pond where the ripples kind of go out elsewhere. Um, and, um, you know, being involved with just very, very momentarily for that one Sunday for like half an hour, um, you know, doing the recording. That, that was, I was super excited to do that. Um, their music's brilliant, you know. So I'm personally looking forward to hearing their album. Mm. Other than that, obviously, selfishly looking forward to doing my own book, which mm. we're going to bring out next. Well, sorry, I'm this hoping year. very soon um, when things have uh, sort of settled down. Well, a bit. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, you know, the, the, the sort of writing is almost there. I mean, I'm embracing the um, indie publishing route, which is what we're doing through Frequency House, independent, essentially independent publishing, um, because it's just got a little bit more soul, mate. You know, um, people who go through standard publishing houses in Wales are... I don't know. I think they're quite easily pleased because a lot of their books don't really sell, if I'm honest with you, you know, and that's not a slight in terms of their poetry. Some of their poetry is very, very good. Um, but unfortunately, poetry books don't sell. So what is it other than a vanity project to have a label um, or publishing house come in and doing that? Yeah, but this ties back into what I said about the reason why it's disposable culture. I mean, poetry, you have to think. You can't just go, the cat sat on the mat, look, a rat. You can right but poetry and anything like that of anything of worth might be music yeah but look you know it's like a lot of these people who i'm sort of slightly maligning there all right yeah they, they are very good poets right i'm, I'm not mm. gonna i'm not gonna be as facile enough to kind of suggest otherwise however i just worry or wonder perhaps is more accurate uh, accurate about the route that people choose I think independent publishing like ourselves um, through Frequency House has got a certain virtue. And even if it's not through something like us, um, doing it yourself, you know, you can actually probably sell and distribute more books sometimes uh, on the lower end of the scale than you would through through mainstream sort of things. Um, but yeah, so, I mean, I'm looking forward to my book. Um, I'm hoping it will be... Um, you know, it, it's it's kind of an expression of my next, the next stage of my poetic sort of life. Uh, my first book, which I, oh, I'm not very happy about it, if I'm honest with you. Titan. Um, Titans, yeah. It's not really, I mean, there's some, some poetry in there, which I think I'm quite proud of. I actually like, but I was, I was pushing too much to get so much of my older stuff in. But it's, it's, inter it's, um. It's interesting. The need, the human need to create and record events and thoughts is something that goes back so far aeons in, in who we are. It's, it's in a way, it's a through line, which we're trying to do in the 21st century with Frequency House. Now, that's quite a grandiose statement. I understand that. But it goes far back to cave paintings or anything else. It's, it's this un... Is it? I mean, I, I don't know. Is, is there ever been a scientific study for why we have to... That sort of form of expression, that form Well, it's, of, it's like the scroll in a um, bus station or on a tree. I was here. Or something like that, you know. It's kind of just making a statement that you matter, I guess. I don't know, um, but that's kind of getting into more. Uh, I don't know, not necessarily spiritual issues, but um, we d we do need to address that on the podcast at some point. But um, 
going back to the way that Swansea Council, obviously, because we uh, have stated earlier that they left the house in a state of disrepair when uh, Jeff decided to take up the responsibility, because it is a responsibility. Um, it does baffle me the lack of foresight you know, to, to really make the place, the nest in which you live to be beautiful, <coughs> wonderful. Why not make the surroundings? Why not bring the surroundings? I think up? it's a lack of respect. What, for it's a lack themselves of respect. or? Well. Because surely that's a reflection of the, how they feel about themselves because you would want to create the place in which you live to be as comfortable as possible. You know, we need to celebrate things that we have. You know, that's, that's just where it's at. You know, we need to celebrate... Um, our achievements uh, collectively, individually. Um, it's just slightly off-putting how you kind of... Like, no, I was just double-checking that it was all working. And right. you think you need to come close to the mic. Right, okay, fair enough. I'll speak bit. up a bit. That's okay. <clears throat> I'm not sure where I was going with that, mate. But no, but it doesn't really matter if you weren't sure where you were going with it. It's um, it, it, it just surprises me that the one common thing that he seems to unite a lot of people in Swansea is Swansea Council and the dislike <laughs> for, for their sheer ineptitude and yeah. their sheer neglect. Well, I've got a great example of that. Yeah, keep right. going. I'm, you so, keep talking, I'm just going to okay. double check. Right, so a good example of that is what's happening today as we speak in terms of recording um, the podcast, all right? So the last week or so, there's been... Uh, well, it certainly hasn't been a fanfare, um, about 50 years, uh, was it, is it 50 years? Um, yeah, 50 years. Oh, wow. 50 years of Swansea. Do you really want to get my thoughts on that? But this is an incredible thing, right? So, um, it's sort of celebrating the city's, um, um, history, the legacy, and yet all we've got to see when we walk around the first time, the, the first thing I saw about that was walking, um, uh, my dog in Singleton Park. Right? A nice park and to walk It is a nice dog. park. It is a nice park, right? Yeah. So I happened to venture in there one day and wandering just in through the, the, the sort of bottom gate, um, there were about five um, lampposts with <laughs> these, you probably see this, <laughs> right? Yeah, I know. Five lampposts, right? Laminated, and that's all it was. Laminated card, yeah. Lamin laminated card of saying, 60, you know, 1969. In gold embossed font, yeah. And... and I wasn't even sure what it was about. So I had to actually stop for a second and have a look. And it was like this, um, like you were saying before, this that'll do attitude about what we're doing culturally. It's like they couldn't be bothered. I mean, that's how it looked to me. I mean, but, other things have happened since, but very few things. But what are they doing in their spare time? Cause yeah, but sorry, this we're talking about July now, you know, and it's, it's, it's um, you know... Uh, <sighs> We should have been doing something from the start of the year, but instead we've got a couple of laminated things on a po on, on on a lamppost in July rather than doing something it's incredibly because we lost, all year. It's because we lost out on City of Culture. I guarantee you, if we lo uh, had the City of Culture thing, we would have he would have seen uh, a ramping up of it, right? And when the city I can't say I was very impressed with that uh, bid, but there we are. Well, I wasn't as well, and I knew Coventry were going to were going to get it. Um. The reason why we didn't get it is because it was this huge rush of excitement, too little, too late. You know, it really was. Yeah, but and that's you, not trying to be disrespectful. Yeah, if you if you look at right what the bids were, yeah, okay, the bids for Coventry. If you actually had a look at some of the stuff they were doing online, they were embracing youth. They were embracing different uh, cultures within their town. Mm. Um, Ours just seemed very one-dimensional and quite dated. This sort of dated view of what Swansea or Wales or being Welsh actually did means. They, did they try and drag Paul Dillon out again? Um, I think they did, and I'm sure there was something. I can't remember exactly, but well, it, was, it was all a little bit... Um, passé. Too passe, and it, it just seemed a very grey kind of uh, bid compared to the colour, the vibrancy, the, the you know, I don't always want to use the word multiculturalism, but there was this kind of variety of cultures being celebrated by these other bids. And now we've got a lot of stuff going on in our city, but yet that wasn't expressed through the main bids as I saw it. 
You know, I'm sure other people might take issue with that and say, well, actually, it is playing it safe. But it's also just looking, it's also an image of Swansea that was relevant 30, 40 years ago. You know, it's it's it wasn't a bid that embraced um, the demographic changes changes within our city that are current. Mm. Loads of stuff's going on, and yet nothing's going can't. on. Yeah, exactly. I think a lot of that has to come down to something like an like an. It almost feels like an immovable object which is blocking everything. And I can't work out who or what it is. And I know it sounds conspiratorial and very tinfoil hat, but it feels, it feels like there is something that just won't Mate, allow it. it. It's, it's, it's almost like this committee view of there you self-governance. Go. You know, everyone, you know, um, wants to be the decision maker. Everyone wants to to sort of be involved in some sort of committee or a subcommittee or something like that. And it just loses sight of what, the realities are and what the end goal is um and i was just dreadfully disappointed about the kind of energy that was going into that bid um and it, well, it's, you know, it, the, it's, it, it's a travesty the mate. argument then would have been like why didn't you do anything and the, and but then the, the reason is that in my experience not with that but my experience of trying to do stuff this is why frequency house happened because trying to do stuff locally it's just met with either derision or a brick wall, or it, does it involve doing a rendition of Under Milk Wood? Well, no. Well, we can't do anything for you then. And I mean, Dylan would probably be turn. He's probably turning in his grave over it, be- because it's it's lit. It, it it just it is. It's absolutely infuriating. It is. There is more to Swansea than just. Well, more stuff's going on, but as we've been saying before. Um... All of the good stuff that's happening is happening at a grassroots level. You know, whether it's ourselves doing our little enterprise here in Frequency House or whether it is the Joe Bayliss is doing the uh, Swansea Fringe Festival. Now, he does link in with the council. Like, you know, you've got to give him that. Um, I would not take that away from him. I would no, not, I'm not, not, that's not. Definitely not. Sorry, that, that is not meant as a criticism. No, no, no. Way. Um, but the point I'm making is that the things that are happening culturally happen from the grassroots and yet they aren't... Um, that they aren't being proactively sought after by the council to kind of get involved in, put money into the arts, but all the rest of it. Why? Why? Because this people is the like thing. a bit of power. Is it, is it just genuine? People like a bit of power. People, um, whether they're in local government, doesn't matter what city they're in, you know, it, it, you know, uh, they like it on their committees and subcommittees they like it at sort of national level whether they're in the houses of parliaments on a subcommittee but what do they do after the after the job is finished well listen i was having a conversation okay and this was oh god when was it it must have been 2017 at some point uh talking to somebody who works for the council right right mentioning Um, no names i'm not going to mention the name what was his name (laughs) no you got to put that in yeah you've got it in man yeah yeah. i know i said it at the beginning Um, but uh, I won't mention whether it's, uh, they were male or female. Uh, it was a duck, whatever. wasn't it? You it were chatting to a, a duck. bloody duck. Well, I may duck. as well have been. Just say it was a duck. I may as well have it was been. A, it was a mallard bent on revenge. Yes. Yeah. Well, you pretty much summed yeah. it up, right? So, so this mallard and you were talking. This mallard that I was talking <laughs> to. Bloody mallard, right, yeah. flipping mallard. <laughs> I was talking to them uh, outside the pub, um, talking about a little bit um, about what's going on in the cultural scene. They were saying that um, uh, they're... On, on the council, working the council, not as a, as, not as a politician, but as a civil servant, whatever they are. Um, and had no idea. He had no idea what was happening locally. Now, I don't know if it was a facetious statement that they made about the Dylan Thomas birthplace. I was saying, oh, well, you know, we're doing X, Y, Z up there. I was like, well, where's that? And I actually had that answer from someone who's officially on the council. Now, that beggars belief because it's just... A, classic example of just not caring they're not caring about the people that who are actually doing things in the city that bringing the cultural happenings to life right so just um to further that point along about um what's kind of happening in swansea right there are multitude of nights uh of open mic poetry nights etc right there's loads going on with in you know in the music field absolutely granted. i know all that right um Particularly, I haven't talked to you and Chris about it, but and Cinema and Code, they do that fantastic well, thing with doing. I've cinema. got to, I've got to give this right to now. You've mentioned that to Anna Redfern, right, who owns Cinema and Co. Um, 
that she really embraces the local art scene, right? Um, she puts on and assists to put on cultural and arts events there all the time. She's a genius. She she, she literally, and it's it's such a simple, I, I'm not saying say it's a simple idea because I don't want to sort of discredit it, but it is an absolute genius idea of doing an independent cinema and putting on films. It's, I mean, essentially that's what a cinema and co is, but then it, it, it's, it's metamorphosized into a venue and these events and stuff. She's an absolute genius. Yeah. And, and the nicest thing about that isn't just the Anna Redfin is um, embracing the cultural scene and helping promote it, actively promote it. But like, as we were talking in podcast number one with Jeff Hayden, Cinema & Co. is pretty much exactly at the spot where the, the original Cardoma Cafe was when Dylan was frequenting it. I know it. we're getting into the geography side of and things. And the geography of it and the psychogeography. There we go. That's what Steve Wilson was talking about, right? But, um, you know, so the legacy continues in, in a different form almost through Cinema & Co., all right. But um, yeah, I mean, it's an amazing thing that um, is actually on that spot. In fact, predating the Cardoma Cafe on the grounds uh, where Cinema Co is essentially now, um, that would have been the chapel where Dylan Thomas's parents would have married. We should do... Or did marry. If things go well, which they are doing, we should do a live one from Cinema and Co. I'm all over that. We should do... Are you already, you've already yeah. made inquiries? No, that, no, 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 but I'm... That we bring yeah, get yeah. get an audience in and go, right, so this is being recorded live. It's going to be a podcast, but you, what we're going to do is we're going to make it funny and it's going to be a bit sort of off the wall. Well, you'll have to bring the funny. I, <laughs> but yeah, I'll try my best. But I think it would work. I think it'd be quite interesting to sort of have these sorts of Well, we actually need to get Anna on here as well. Would she come on? Well, I don't know. I haven't asked her. But, yeah. Um, I think in terms of what's happening in Swansea. Um, she's a, a key player and all that. But see, when you say the word like howl poetry, poetry slam, cinema and co, frequency house, it doesn't sound hokey. None of these names uh, that we've given and uh, ascribed and, you know, it doesn't sound hokey. It doesn't sound like, oh, the, you know, it just doesn't sound naff, does it? It sounds like, well, okay, it sounds a bit like... Something's happening. Yeah, it doesn't Something's sound... Something's going on. Oh, this is X, Y, and Z. It, it, it's, it sounds like, okay, this is pretty good. And it's also sort of with Beer Riff is another one. I, I, I got it. Well, to my shame, I've not been there yet. You, well, we'll go down. Um, it's what they've done there is, again, is a stroke of genius. It's, I really like it in there. I like the vibe. I like the atmosphere. I really do. I think it's great. Um, I love, um, the pilot as well in Mumbles, which I think has got something to do with the same brewery. There are these small pockets of just not resistance, but just bucking the cultural trend, trying to do something different. Well, Copper Bar actually is pretty good. Yeah, I've not um, been in there. They do. I mean, um, that's where um, another poetry collective, Talisman, meets. Mm. Um, I think they're doing it twice a month at the minute. Sounds a little bit World of Warcraft for me, Talisman. They're not oh right, yeah, I see your point. Bit, I see your point. Yeah. Um, well, I don't know why it was uh, why that name was used, but um, you know that's that's quite a long-standing group now. How long? Um, I'm not sure. Mm. Um, I do know that the longest-running group is one I'm comparing, which is Hal. <laughs> nice, uh, so, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when is Hal yeah. back on? So excellent question. Because we need Simon. to. We need this because I want this go on Sunday. I'm hoping it'll be out on Sunday. Well, Hal, uh, now you've asked, is yeah. uh, the third Thursday of every month. Fantastic. And that's upstairs in Noah's yard. You've asked me to come to that a few times, and you still haven't bothered. It's um, nerves. It's, an, it's well, it's, you can sit and drink. I'm sure. Well, you can be good at that. <laughs> ah, God. Oh, actually, I've seen you. Yeah, 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 rubbish. Um, it's it's. It's something for me. It's um, yeah. It's it's just it's just nerves. I uh, haven't got a guitar there. I feel quite inadequate, you know, if I'm not well, running. Well, you're quite welcome something. to bring a guitar down. Mate. That would be ridiculous. No, that's not. No, not at all. Because that's that's one of the things about the poetry nights in Swansea. Mm. You can do anything like that, yeah. and that, and that that's that's normal. Man. Well, I remember. This is going back. This is way back in the day. I remember when I was in a really quite intense relationship and you and i had just met and i'll never forget this there was a night on that joe had put on i think at mozart's and i turned up and you were there and i was like oh hi how's it going yeah i do i do i remember that evening god i wish i'd known what i know now at that evening i really do Oh no, wowzers trousers. Well, wowzers trousers. <laughs> I'm not sure where you're going to go with that. However, what uh, I mean is I should have been spending time doing something like this as opposed to 
<laughs> well, you know, <laughs> you know what I mean. You know, being in a relationship, but, but but we linked up quite nicely with all of that because um, I was over the moon when you approached me in Cranes. I couldn't believe my luck. I genuinely. Well, that's where this. Uh, that's where the seed of Frequency House originated from. I think recollection wise, um, not because of the name. The name emerged later between the three of us with Chris Organ as well. However, um, the idea of going into some kind of a business setup about a record label or a publishing house um you know i saw your business plan weirdly within the space of about five minutes you produced that it's like let's get it <laughs> let's just do it um no but going back I to motor i probably I mean, that, couldn't do that, that again that, these that days. is such a travesty that, that um place went in the end because howell poacher and i originated from there um, and Adam Silman actually originally there uh, was, set up the crunch from it. There was a thing with Mozart's. I don't think every night worked there perfectly, but nights like that did. The Howl Poetry Night worked there. You could envisage small intimate gigs and small intimate events. Well, you but know what? trying to be bigger, I yeah. don't think it I don't think it did probably not. Right probably not, but it had a certain feel to it. It was it, quite an oh, unusual yeah. place. It was very unusual and it was somewhere that people would go, What well, you've never been to Mozart, yeah. so you've got to go to Mozart. Well it's, it's a lost a gem now, isn't it? Oh, that that's the way I see it. Um you know, they had the the sort of kutch there, the, you know, the Dylan's kutch in the in the front room. Um I like that bit of the, of the Yeah, room, yeah. It's, it was it was a different vibe, but as we were talking with Amy Sinha. Mm. Uh, podcast number three with a jazz scene um you know that uh place um in terms of motas after that went quickly after that we're talking in the space of a fortnight saint james's jazz club shut which is crazy for me which is so. absolutely mental i mean chris was was mentioned this um uh during that podcast that like he knew so i don't know if it was a relative but someone he knew had been going there for like 50 years plus i mean it was absolutely mental um, and again, so we've lost another cornerstone. But of do the any scene. of the any? But see, then this is what goes back to something I was saying. If people on the council who should be ring fencing and protecting these things, what do they do in terms of relaxation, and what do they do in terms of pursuits outside of work? They can't be chained to their computers. Well, so I, they, I don't see any of them at any of the cultural events. Right. Well, let's then just why, let's just call it as it is. Well, Have you seen they, any? Of them? No. Well, what do they do? What do, do, do they literally go down to Prezzo Lounge or Bistro Pierre and sit there and lord it over other people? This is what it's about, right? It's because if that's the case, it's ridiculous. So, I, this is always comes back to the same word for me gatekeepers. Yeah, there, there are too many gatekeepers involved in our society. People like that are classic examples of it. All right, other people who are classic examples of it for me are some of the um, uh publishing houses including in wales yeah you know, okay that's just the way it's at man i mean you know let's not beat around the bush around it you know i mean there are certain models of um promoting and doing things and publishing things and releasing records all the rest mm. of it um they don't quite fit into our mentality do they no because we were talking about this before mm. you know i think you were mentioning a couple of record labels now, i don't know where they they're, they're based but you're talking about relapse records yeah um with the death other two? wish death wish and hydrohead who sadly kind of they're not defunct but they've had to really reduce what they do because again i mean yeah now that was a travesty because the what, hydrohead Hydrohead having to sell off loads of its stock and do sort of like barn sales and whatnot, <coughs> to use the expression. Um, so where were they based? They at? were based in America. I can't remember where in America. Right, just Seattle or no, no, no. Um, it was that was set. Right, okay. It got to a point. May I prof uh, may I prophetize on this? Go for it. I'm okay, I need to get uh, big into the beer here. Go okay, so it. so it got to a point for me, and I'm just speaking for myself, where a pattern emerged where I couldn't work out what bands to go with. Now, this is back before the crash of internet, of physical sales of CDs. I still buy CDs. And it got to this point, and this is one of the reasons why CDs failed, is because major record labels were putting out junk. It's, it's as simple as that. They were putting out junk. Like you bought it for one or two songs and you'd spend seventeen ninety nine, and this is back in 2000, 2001, on a CD that was awful, right? Awful. And there's a lot of them in my collection like that, okay? Transitory stuff. Then all of a sudden, I was living in Bristol, places like Replay Records, who to this day was the greatest record store I've ever been into. You could go and you could smoke in there. 
and looking for vinyl. It's the best thing I'd ever seen in my life, okay? I genuinely mean that. Um, all of a sudden, I started noticing from one or two bands, and this goes back to the thing about talking to people about, you know, recommendations, okay? Like you're saying about Dylan, okay? There's nothing better going to a record store, small record store, and somebody recommending you something because you build up a relationship of trust. It's amazing. Same with bookstores, same with guitar shops, same with anything. It's that. The internet can't do that. If you like this, then you may like that. It doesn't work the same. Somebody going, dude, you need to check this out. That's something else because you're making a connection. And that's, a, that's what life's about. So what I'm saying is this, getting off the topic as I always do. I started to notice through a couple of bands that I was recommended, the same label. So it's like, I think Hydrahead was the first one. What the hell's this? And then I stopped looking at the band. I started looking at the label. And that is part of the model of Frequency House for me. It's that stamp of authenticity, you're going to like it. You like everything else on this label, you're probably going to like this because it's off the wall. So Hydra Head was huge for me. It was like the first, like... So what happened to them then? They, they just didn't get... I just think they just didn't have the support that they needed. Um, I think that they were fighting a bit of a losing battle considering that you have to take into consideration to export and import CDs... Uh, I mean, because Hydrahead releases weren't cheap and they were mega... It was like rocking horse shit. Sorry, excuse the phrase. So you walk into the HMV and if you saw one, you were lucky because somebody else who's into it would have nabbed it. They would have gone. So your big stockists like HMV would get one or two in and they just, you know, oh, there's no demand. Yeah, because you're not getting it there. Um, so it got to a point where I think exporting CDs <coughs> and vinyl internationally must have been a huge drain on them and i don't know the other financial ins and outs of it but it must have been a very hard very hard slog for those guys but the stuff that was released like the band isis not the terrorist organization i mean they the if i remember the, the a lot of the stuff i think was on hydra i think it was on hydra head or it might have been on ipica i think some of the stuff was on ipica forgive me but ipica is another fantastic label um, Cave-In are another example. Stephen Brodsky is obviously part of Cave-In. I think Oxbow were on there. Um, I'm trying to remember. Uh, Key Hall. Um, uh, and there was lots of other sort of bands that were on this label. Um, the better example of that for me, and this is no disrespect to Hydrahead, was Death Wish, right? Now, Death Wish was, is something else. Jacob Bannon, Bannon's label is in Converge. It isn't just music. There's arts related stuff. There's poetry books. There's his own, his prints, there's t shirts. So, so they're not still going. They are. Oh, Death, they are, Death right, Wish right, right, are right. unstoppable. Right. Yeah. They really are. And it got to a point where you'd, I'd buy an album. Is it on Death? Oh, it's on Death Wish. I'm having it. I know I'm going to like it. I know I'm going to like it. Relapse is probably the best example of but all these guys are interconnected this is the beautiful thing about it sorry to point to you this is the beautiful thing about it. all those guys are buddies and they talk i'm not saying they're all best buds but they all know each other right and relapse is one of the best examples of it working right you buy a record that's on relapse uh yeah guaranteed you're probably gonna like it if you like the stuff not 100 percent. so it. but but i'm guessing they probably started on a shoestring as well oh god yeah of course they would have um and then at some point they're gonna um, get lucky with one or two releases. Oh, they did with Mastodon, I think. Was, uh, right, yeah. You, you, I think you've mentioned that to me before. Well, Mastodon. Or Chris mentioned it. I can't, I can't remember. Mastodon are just, um, well, you know, forget yeah. about it. Um, but yeah, so I mean, I suppose one of my kind of worries with Frequency House is that we, we're having to start essentially on a budget, on a shoestring, uh, build up slowly, get the right people on, on, you know, on the label. These things um, take time. Yeah, they do take time. Um, but then it's it's hoping that you get that one or two, um, or certainly one to begin with, isn't it? Um, sort of uh, name that's going to go on and do considerably better and well. Um, so it's I don't know. It's a worry that that that, that we're, we're we're trying to reach for something as well, but obviously being. Trying limited to rein, trying to rein ourselves in be limited well we are limited aren't we well, we, we should room. be totally self-effacing we were when we first started it was every idea under the sun thrown 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 um and the coalesced there another band that one hydra had uh it only coalesced when um 
we we all decided as a group to do a podcast because it was something that we were all kicking around as an idea because we used to go back to yours, have a couple, and say, oh, man, we should record this. to be brilliant, blah, blah, blah. And then you and I were just like, right, let's get the gear. Let's just do it. Let's try it. And it it, it the podcast, I'm going to sound incredibly uh, ego-driven yet. I'm so proud of it. I know this is like episode five and it's going to be, edited and we didn't we haven't got a proper guess it's just you and me chewing the fat and chris isn't here which uh, it's a shame it really is um well things happen man yeah that's just one of the but things man i'm over the i'm excited by it i like working what i like it. about it is that we're we're still doing something even if it's just doing the podcast there is something kind of it's uh, throwing a fishing net out isn't it yeah exactly and it's getting a bit of exposure for the label as well which is something i really want to uh keep promoting because it's one of our best tools to, to get the name uh, sort of better known uh, and bringing in guests in the cultural um, world um, from the city, you know, is, is... I really want an author. I really want an author. <laughs> I thought that was me, wasn't it? Well, you are. You're po- um, uh, no, 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 no. Well, I don't know. Have you written a book? Um, no. No. See, no. there's different, it's different, mm. but it's... No, I, that, yeah, no, it's a fair shout. It's a fair shout. But we've got some artists, mm. though, mate. Yeah. We've got some artists on the go. Well, who's coming up then? Come on, because I forget. We're supposed to have... Uh, oh, well, in, what, for the podcast or for just projects? Or well, podcast as well. Who's next? Who's next? Well, um, we've got the guy who runs the Dylan's bookstore. Oh, sorry. Yeah, Jeff Towns. Yeah, um, Jeff Towns will be good. Yeah, Jeff Towns will be very good. In fact, I've got a funny feeling he might be the next up. Um, so we'll have a double check on that one. But, you know, Jeff Towns is another very interesting guy. Would you be happy to uh, swap the dates over? Like well, he did say he can do July. So um, probably latter half of July. I think any time that we sort of link in with that, that should be okay. Um, even if we bat it back in like another week. Um, but, you know, just about Jeff Towns in anticipation for his podcast. Very, very interesting guy. Um, encyclopedic about Dylan Thomas. Uh, has the Dylan's mobile bookstore. I mean, he's invested heavily in terms of like the energy to maintain that legacy. You know, he obviously knows Jeff Hayden very well. Um, and he's done, he's done numerous things, man. He, he was actually on, uh, uh, on a podcast slash radio show. I think I might've mentioned this to you, uh, with Karis Matthews. Oh, um, last, was it last month? Yeah. yeah. I think that's when I picked it up. Mm. Um, but I mean, I was a bit frustrated with that to be honest, because he didn't have much, to, sorry. Yeah. He didn't have much time to talk. Well, the um, format's different, isn't it? The format's completely different. Yeah. I mean, we just want to sit, have a beer, have a chat, talk, talk it out. You know? the, the other thing, um, I wanted to ask you, um, do you ever feel that Swansea, when you walk out in the street, I, of late, it just doesn't feel, I don't want to go this, it just doesn't feel right, you know? It just, it feels fractured. And so, I, 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 oh, it, dude, like society is majorly fractured. That, that this is like a, 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 you know, it's a thing. Like it is happening. Um, a friend of mine, um, member of Poets on the Hill, Sam, um, basically works in Cardiff, right? And um, so when she gets off the train there, she walks across and goes over to the government buildings um, across town. And she said that there are so many homeless people in Cardiff that, and they're all asking for money. And she's just like there with like a spare quid in her pocket thinking, who am I going to give my quid to? Who is the most worthy homeless person that I can, I can hand it over to? I mean, the guilt is incredible. I've noticed that there's more dysfunction within our city of late. That's a good word, dysfunction. Um, yeah. Um, it is dysfunctional. And um, there's more people in the city, I think. Um, there's more migration into the city. And that puts a little bit more kind of strain on other resources as well, or people think, it, certainly people think it does. So, I mean, tonight's podcast has been, it's been different. It's a very different dynamic when you and I are trying to 
because we've tried this before in here, didn't we? Unsuccessfully, because we sat down on the couches and it didn't work. Well, that was a different setup. It was a different setup. Because but... we, we were already three or four beers deep. Yes. We were sat on uh, two armchairs. <laughs> those can... yeah, yeah, those, those two armchairs. Yeah. That massive settee. Yeah. Um, I, I, and, you know, so, I mean, it wasn't really that conducive to a conversation. Uh, but... The the, 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 the Last Smith and Jones format for this one-to-one works a little bit better, yeah. doesn't yeah. it? Um, so I kind of but we both quite like the dynamic. We, we did both bring our A game tonight, I think. I think we did. Did we? I'm going to put it out. I want to put it out because I think... Um, I think you're you're putting it, potentially putting it, it's sort of setting us up for a fall here. Do you think it shouldn't well, go out? Well, no, no, I'm not saying don't go out. I'm just saying, you know, we both brought, brought our A game. I mean, the only thing I, I can enjoyed say, it. It took my mind No, I enjoyed it. Christ, been. yeah. I mean, I, I, I totally enjoyed it. However... What? I think I think the, the 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 sort of interesting parts of the podcast for me tonight were were probably meandering into to the historical stuff with Swan. That Lake. was really good. I wish so, I'd gone back to that in, in yeah, hindsight. Yeah, yeah. But, that, I mean, because I mean that does that deserves a lot more kind of thought and conversation. But I, you know, I quite like to have that conversation with other guests as well. You know, particularly people of a little bit older years. I mean, I'm forty three, right? And what are you? What, what are you? Thirty. Thirty-seven. Thirty-seven. I'm 40, so, I'm forty-three. So I mean, I'm already of all the years. But what I mean is, you know, people have, you know, that upper you, gear. Your, well, the, you know, their historical right, knowledge that, of the town is a lot is a that, lot greater. That is that is something that we need to do. We need to record and venerate people of an older generation because they're going to have a lot more experiences. Is, is very important. I think we should. You know, there you are. Listeners. Well, it's a mix, though, isn't it? Get more, yeah. Get some people who have lived and can actually tell us, you know, how things were and how they've improved. I particularly like to find out about some more of the historical buildings in Swansea that we've lost. Not just, not just through the war years, right? Not just know, through the war years. Do you know who's amazing for that? Well, go Five on. Horse, Big Steve, Big Steve, Big Steve, Five Horse. I don't know who this is. You do. You had a drink with Five Horse. So it's you, me, Five Horse. Oh, big right. Steve, big, the big Steve, Steve, Five big Horse. Steve. Right. Now, okay. listen, okay. he is like a walking um, Tom Tom with it. He knows right. his stuff. He's right. good. He's good. Trust me. Well, get him on, man. Get Steve on. Five Horse on. Yeah. His brother's very interesting, by the way. His brother works on Wall Street. Oh, no. Right. Okay. That no, 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 no. An, an interesting dynamic. Very cool guy. Very cool yeah. guy. Yeah. Not what you think in yeah. terms of Wall Street. I'm not saying he's a hot dog vendor, but he works for a recruitment <laughs> company. Huge yeah. difference. Um, well, with that, um, hopefully in whatever context, um, you'll be listening to this. Uh, I don't want to say heavily edited, but, you know, we're going to... We took a break. We had a I'm cigarette. it'll be heavily edited. edited. Yeah. But, you know, um, I just want to say thank you very much. Um, apologies that we've been a bit infrequent with Frequency House. Uh, and apologies to Chris Hogan for not... Hogan? Oh, God, he's going to kill me. Start again. No, I'm not. He scares me. Chris scares me. So apologies to Chris uh, not being... Uh, with us tonight um i've enjoyed myself um and hopefully we'll have another one coming to you very soon so uh with that from the dylan thomas birthplace it's good night from me and it's good night from him mm-hmm.